Uh, we're going to drain the coolant out of the radiators, so this is a good opportunity. And we're going to look at a few different engines here and see some different ways that we can uh, accomplish this. When we go to drain these radiators, okay, we've got a crossover, which means that this one is going to be filled. When we we have a fill on this side, what I like to do is look at the fill side of it. And there's a couple things. I got this overflow tube. I'm going to want to disconnect that. Now, here's my recommendation. Don't take... Have you drained it yet? No. Ouch. Don't take the cap off. Why not? Michael, I bet you know this one. I have a feeling. Because when it bubbles up. Because you take the cap off, you it. Okay. So what we want to do is try and figure out, well, how can we drain the system? There's some cylinders will have drains on them on four strokes. On two strokes, they don't. It's typically just going to spill all over the place. And we want as much antifreeze out of here as possible... So we want to go to the lowest point. So as we look along the radiators here and we see the bottom of this goes to what, this is the water pump itself. And when I look at the fasteners on this one, the very bottom one, and how do you know that that's the drain? Well, we got a whole bunch of two strokes that have the drain sideways. Okay, here's, here's your clue, guys. This is the, what you can cross over to anything. Anytime it's a drain screw, you've already heard this, it has a crush washer. And it's made out of aluminum or Press. copper. Press. Yep. Okay. Not no, not in uh, the metric world. It's pretty much a, a metal washer, if you will. Okay. So if I drain this, I get my panner here. I get this drain out. Okay. It's barely just going to kind of run out slow. And then once I'm set up, oops. Once I'm set up, then I go ahead and take my cap off, and it is just going to pour on me. Okay. Then the next thing I'd want to do is take a look at removing these hoses and these cables. So do you guys remember that uh, in your toolkit I showed you guys had a radiator hose removal tool? Once I have this drain, that's what this tool's for. I do not want to penetrate or poke the rubber hose. So well, I take my hose clamp off and have it loose, and I, I don't want to unthread this to where I peel it apart or it's hard on the hose clamp. I want to just have it loose on here. I take this hose and kind of get it stretched out. I'm going to try, once this is off, to see if I could break it by hand. And what I mean by break it is break the seal, right? If I'm still struggling with it, once that's off, I can get in here like this, with the hose clamp off, and I can manipulate or just kind of break the seal as I pull it apart. On this, on this particular setup here, we're taking our radiators off because we want our engine. So let me ask you, of the two places here, what would be the better one to take off? Off the motor, thank you. Okay. Um, do you have to take the radiators off to no. get that motor out? No. no. Yes. I think on this one you do because there's no clearance. I think it, I think when you're trying to lift it up, it'll hit the radiators. So we we're going to remove our radiators for good practice. Do you see how we have another attachment to the cylinder head? Yeah. So what happens is we go down to the pump. The pump runs it up through the cylinder out from the head and then back into the top of the radiators. And then they run back down, we remove the heat out of it, and the cycle repeats itself.